Good morning and welcome to Conversations with Dr. Johnson. Good morning. Dr. Daniel Johnson. Um, he is the medical director for our clinic, for Antifragility Health Clinic, and I am Charles Cena. And mostly I'm going to be the one asking Dr. Johnson questions and ensuring that he puts the real shit down to where it should be, right? Simple language for common folks like us. So Dr. Johnson, today we're going to be talking about um, ultrasound diagnostics. Excellent. Yeah. Why is that an important diagnostic tool for you? Well, ultrasound allows us to see certain things inside the body. Now, in case anybody doesn't know, ultrasound is a technology of bouncing sound waves off the tissues and catching the echo that comes back and turning that into a picture. So. Uh, ultrasound in the neck can look at the condition of the carotid arteries. About 90% of strokes are caused by clogged carotids. And so uh, if you're age 55 or older, I want to do a carotid ultrasound on you so that if you've got blockages, we can catch it early, nip it in the bud, and prevent a stroke that might happen down the road. In the neck, we can also see if the thyroid gland has any nodules. Uh, thyroid nodules are very, very common, and uh, most of them are harmless, but with ultrasound, we can help sort out this, the benign ones from the more Helpful serious one. ones. Yeah, yes. uh, We can use ultrasound on the heart uh, to get a very clear picture of the valves in the heart and how the overall heart is functioning. We cannot see clogged arteries in the heart, unfortunately. Uh, that requires a different technology. And when they did mine, they did it from the front and from the back also. Yes. Yeah, so could you explain that, please? Well, ultrasound only penetrates so far into the tissue. Yeah. So if you're trying to get a clear picture of the front side of the heart, you use the front approach. Uh, if you're trying to get a clear picture of the back side of the heart, you can use the back approach. And in some people, you can see everything you want from the front but uh, some people are larger and uh, we have to get a shot from the back. Was that a dig at me for being a bigger guy? <laughs> that my hat is so big that just one side would not be enough. I have a big, gracious hat that can take everybody in. <laughs> right. And so after the hat- That was well, not a dig. Well, I know, Doc, I know, <laughs> Doc. So after the hat, ultrasound, what else as you're going down? So you're following the circulatory pathways or the main arterial pathways. Yes. So if you do ultrasound in the abdomen, you can see a lot of things. You can see the liver, the gallbladder, the pancreas, the spleen, the kidneys, the aorta. Now about here, the aorta, which is like a garden hose, the largest artery in the body, it splits in half uh, to the iliac arteries and then continues into the legs as the femoral arteries. And we can look at those arteries and see what's going on in terms of uh, enlargement, like an aneurysm or atherosclerosis, which is hardening and or clogging of the arteries. Uh, we can see arteries in the legs. We can see what's going on with circulation there. And if we need to, if we have a male with erectile dysfunction, we can do an ultrasound of the penile arteries and we can see if poor blood flow is the cause or maybe one of the causes of their erectile dysfunction. So is that applicable only to men? What about women? Isn't the blood flow to those areas the same for men and women? Well, with uh, women do not have penile arteries, okay? All right. So uh, in women, we can see the uterus, we can see the ovaries, we okay. can see ovarian cysts. Okay, yes. I was talking about aging yeah. and just the issues with libido and performance and, and things like that. Yeah, I find that uh, uh, atherosclerosis typically starts uh, somewhere in the 40s. Okay. It can start earlier. Yes. It can start later, but around 40 is fairly typical. And so it's always good to do your genetics, right? To find out if there's family history susceptibility to a lot of these cardio issues. Uh, that can be very helpful. Yes. Although we do have to understand that only about 5 to 10% of the bad things that happen to us are genetic. The other 90 to 95% are under our control, lifestyle. diet and lifestyle, yes. uh, exercise habits, that sort That's of thing. That's interesting because now... Um, based on your finding, 
how then do you intervene and what recommendations typically would you make uh, for the findings that generally you would observe in those areas? Okay, so um, let's say somebody has hardening and or clogging of the arteries. We want to take a two-pronged approach. On the one hand, what can we do to improve the condition of the arteries, no matter what caused the problem? And then on the other hand, what did cause the problem? There are about 15 possible risk factors. I, I was hoping you would use that yeah. to nail analogy yeah. in looking at this dual prong approach. Yeah. So there are things like diabetes, smoking, obesity, hypertension, cholesterol, triglycerides, homocysteine, CRP, LP level So all of a. these things that Doc is listing are things that typically would be in your blood panel as clinical biomarkers, the measurements of what's really going on biologically in your body, right? Yes, right. yeah. There's also things like nitric oxide deficiency, magnesium deficiency, heavy metal toxicity, excessive iron, uh, stress. There's a long list. So we want to take a two-pronged approach. Uh, how do we improve the arteries? And then on the other hand, how do we identify the risk factors and then neutralize whatever risk factors are in play? Because if we just address the arteries and don't address the risk factors, the problem is just going to come back. So uh, here's the analogy I like to use. Suppose that somebody spilled a box of nails in the street right in front of your driveway. You, you're not aware of it. You come driving through the nails. Now you got a flat tire, maybe two, three, or even four flat tires. Well, just fixing the flat tires doesn't solve the problem. Somebody's got to clean up the nails, otherwise you're going to keep getting more flat tires, okay? So we address the arteries directly, and uh, there's a wonderful supplement called Arteracil that's very helpful, but the most definitive way of dressing this is a series of intravenous treatments with something called chelation therapy, alternating with something called plaque X. And all of those therapies are things that we do, and I have been taking them myself, uh, and I'm also on the aterosil, which is a very important thing for clearing all of that plaque. Yes. Very important. But that is intervention, clearing the nails. Yes. How then do we ensure that there are no more nails or the things left in the environment? Well, uh, we periodically recheck the biomarkers, the risk factors. Um, you know, sometimes there are several supplements patients need to take. Some patients get lazy and stop taking them. So uh, if we're rechecking those biomarkers at least once a year, we can get them back on track if something has kind of fallen apart. Okay, we know that the number one risk for chronic illness in America is cardiometabolic. It's cardiac, yes. cardio uh, metabolic issues. And so that's why uh, doing a very extensive check, Yes. most doctors will not do this complete set of ultrasounds that you did on me? No, in mainstream medicine, what we typically see is that the first carotid ultrasound for a given patient is the one they do after the stroke. Now, to me, that's criminal. Uh, I do know how to treat strokes. I have a good track record with it, but I don't want to treat strokes. I want to prevent them. Correct. And so past the age of 55, we do a carotid ultrasound every year. Uh, to make sure that you're staying out of the danger zone. So it's very important, as the doctor just said, if you're past 40, 45, 50, it is important that you do a complete ultrasound of this key arterial act uh, functions to know how much risk you have and the adjustments and things that you need to face. Yes, correct. And that's what you're saying, doctor. And that's what we practice here. And uh, so another day, uh, having a conversation with Dr. Johnson. Dr. Johnson, thank you for those tips. All right, thank and, you, uh, Charles. We'll be running another one tomorrow. Okay. And uh, who knows what the topic will be. We'll find something interesting yes. to talk about. Yes, I'll, I'll be the last to know, I'm sure. Yes, <laughs> thank you, Dr. Johnson. All right, my pleasure. Thanks.